that will let you know that wealth is not everything. Having money is not everything. You can be void. You can be empty. You can have uh, 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 places in your life where you are not fulfilled and have a whole bunch of money. All right? So if you begin this process of wealth creation just trying to get money, you're going to be sadly mistaken. You're going to be sadly mistaken because it's not about what you get. It's really about what you can get through you. Okay, so it's not about what you acquire, but it's about what you can handle, and then what you get to, uh, what you can get to somewhere else. Um, I'm gonna paraphrase Deuteronomy 8 and 18 says, uh, God gives us the ability to create wealth, so that His will can be established in the earth. All right, so the reason why He can trust the mom, Mama Jenny with a nationally known business because He can get stuff through her. Okay, the reason why he can trust a Tiffany Montgomery to be a millionaire producer uh, and trainer and mentor is because he can get stuff through her. Okay, so we have to be able to get to a place where we don't have those things in our heart, those things in our soul, those things in our mind that are going to block the blessings of God from flowing through us. Okay, because if his will cannot be established in the earth, you don't need money. You don't need money. If he can't see, here's the thing. I can guarantee you, in this day and time, with everything that we're seeing in the news, everything that we're seeing on TV, if we can begin to create wealth in our community and help our young men and our young women know their value, not based around money, but based around who they are and what they can create, we'll see violence go down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't, everybody comes from different regions and different mm -hmm. places, but in Richmond, the most crime-stricken areas are in the inner city. I pastor a church in the inner city. I opened up a community center in the inner city. We're having a, a state-of-the-art uh, income-based daycare in the inner city. All of these things we're doing in the inner city because that's where the problem is. And let me help you. There's not a lot of people from other cultures, from other backgrounds that are stepping into our community saying, let me help you. Yeah. Yeah. But what's displayed on the news every single night is African-American man, African man getting shot. Right. Another black person getting shot. Black people are angry. Black people are this. And this is not a culture thing. I believe kingdom over culture. But here's the issue, and here's my stance. That if you're not going to come over into my community and build us up, which I don't expect, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it myself. Amen. I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> you can expect, listen to me, you can expect the Jews to come over into our community and build it up. And there's nothing wrong with you valuing yourself, your community, and pouring back into it. Now listen, if I'm hungry and I'm in Chester, and I've got time and space, I could go by Taco Bell, I could go by McDonald's, but if I got time and space, why not take my money and go spend it with Mama J? Right. Mm -hmm. Her restaurant is on the what, top 50 bucket list. So the more money I put into that restaurant, the more ac uh, uh, accomplishments and rewards and awards she can get. And it's not, and here's the thing, Everybody else can do it but us. Right. And when we begin to strategize and do it, it's a problem. They didn't kill Martin Luther King because he had a dream. If you look at the last year of his speech, they killed him because he said, you know what? There's no need for us to fight and get equality with people who don't respect us in the first place. Let's just take our money and let's begin to do this and then begin to do that. They didn't have a problem with I have a dream. They didn't have a problem with equality. But when they said let's redirect our money, yeah. <laughs> that's when it became a problem. And here's the problem, I'm so thankful to have this type of platform, this type of content. We can't stay focused enough to create change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're so used to blaming and pointing the fingers at everybody else, crooked cops, this, that, and the other. Why not, instead of blaming the fingers at cops and judges and crossing our fingers every time a child gets shot and we know the system is already set up to fail us and we're just believing that God's going to step down and come in and make something out of a crooked system and work on our behalf and it doesn't happen that way, why not position ourselves accordingly, buy back our communities, and raise our own communities? And the first thing people would say is, oh, wow, you know, that's a Black Lives Matter thing. Well, here's my issue with that. If you're saying on one hand that African-American males are the problem, and we're the ones that need change, it ought not be anybody to have a problem with us in power. And I do It's oxymoron. It's crazy. Why, why, why are we clutching our pocketbooks and running to our cars? In my day and time, I, and I, I probably straddled generations, but in my day and time, you, if you did anything wrong in the community, you were reprimanded well before you got home. Yeah. 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 You, 
three blocks away, you got about five different yeah. corrections and reviews. Mm -hmm. You know, Miss Susie will come out on the board. I heard that you messed up today. Mm -hmm. You're making three more houses. You gonna get it when you get home. Mm -hmm. There was a level of accountability. Yeah. All right, that that's now detached. Yeah. So wealth creation has really very little to do with money if we don't have some robbery. Are you following? Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into it then. What is wealth? Inner wealth. Your attitude is everything. Your attitude is everything. You have to keep a positive mental attitude. Your attitude is everything. You, you listen. Wealth, finances, revenue is 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 like a magnet, and you can literally out of nothing attract something into your life. All right, with the right mental attitude. All right, perspective is everything. Me and my wife started Kingdom Cars. I'm a, I am own Kingdom Cars Auto Sales and Storehouse Capital. Uh, and, and Storehouse Capital is a finance company. Kingdom Cars Auto Sales is a car dealership. All right, I grew up on Brooklyn Park Boulevard, Haynes Avenue, okay? Um, you know, I had one year of college. And never in a million years did I think that I would own a bank. I didn't, I, vocabulary, English, you hear it in my presentation, it's not my thing. I like money. <laughs> that was my thing. I knew how to count. I knew how to make something out of nothing. All right, so so I, I was always inundated with the art of creation. I was always like excited about how to make something out of nothing. Does that sound like what we see on the news with these young guys out here who are well, look, we ain't bringing no drugs into our community, but somehow they're finding them. And they're creating enterprises in the inner city, mm -hmm. making more money than some of us make in a year. Are y'all following me? Mm -hmm. Does that sound like a gift going bad? Mm -hmm. Does it sound like a, a, a gift that's that's in error, or and it might be you know kind of tampered by 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 own ambition or pride or flesh or whatever the case? You got to have an attitude that says, despite me not having nothing, I can create whatever I want, mm -hmm. and it starts here. My son. And he's just like me. He went to school one day and he bought a soda. And, you know, he had this soda. And the guy came up to him, like, he was after school. The guy came up to him and said, Look, man, I buy that soda from you. said, Man, give me five dollars. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes home, he tells, you know, me and my wife are standing there, we're in the kitchen. He's like, Yo, you know, dad, you know, I sold a soda today for five dollars. So how much you pay for it? He said a dollar. My wife was like, oh my God. <laughs> Call your mother. We need to do this. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> see, see, here's the thing. With, with the right attitude, you'll recognize giftings inside of people. You'll recognize certain things inside of them that you say, you know what, I need to work with that. I need to tap into that. See, the gifting that we want, we want the gifting that we can stand before people and we can wave our hands and they clap. We want we want the gift that, you know, when we sing, people say good job. We preach, people say good job. I want the type of gift that makes you angry. I want you to, I want you to feel the gifting on my life that makes you agitated. For you to be able to say, you know what, I never looked at that before that way. And I'll give you one. And I was, I was talking to Jasmine and the young lady out there at Prime America. Our people spend more money on t-shirts mm -hmm. and go fund me mm -hmm. when we die. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, June mm -hmm. Rest in peace, TT. <laughs> <laughs> That's our people. And we go straight to go fund me. Help us burn. Oh my God, this hit me. I'm sorry. Help me burn this person. Jews at about mitzvah, a 13 year old young man finds out he got land, he got property, he ain't never worked for anybody. It's a business that's going to be passed down to you. It's engrafted in their mind at 18, we're going to get you a, a life insurance because life insurance is not just for when you die, but you can pull from it while you're living. And you can take that $100,000 and start a business. And even when you die, it compounds down to your children. And we scramble as a people. Not because of content. Content's available. You Google everything. You Google everything. It's because of attitude. We put off for tomorrow things that we need to do today. 
I said it one time, I noticed it was women of wealth. I'm okay with it. I said it again. But the price for life insurance for most of us for a month or two, we spend it, fellas. We spend it on get boats. <laughs> Fifteen a on pit bull. That's blue. Women, I'm sorry. I mean from the neck up. We ain't gotta go to Red Bottom. We ain't gotta go to Louis Vuitton. I'm just about 30 about here, lace front. Two hundred dollar bread. I'm not saying don't beautify yourself. I'm not saying that if you're a woman of wealth, you ought to. But your wealth should not be what you put on. You come to sessions like this, you come to training like this to put stuff in you. Y'all following me? We spend more money putting things on us than we do putting in us. I'm going to do a lot of book recommendations tomorrow because you need to have more books in your phone than self right. mm, Amen. Yes. No more available stories because you <laughs> You need to have that Kindle app full of content and information that when you're feeling bad, when you're having a bad day, when you're broke, when your back is against the wall, you can pull inspiration from somewhere. Yes. You trying to manage out how you gonna pay them bills, how you gonna take care of them kids, prayers don't seem like they're working, you can be able to open up something and it breathes life to you. You can remember a testimony of somebody that's doing something that you may wanna do and it'll breathe life to you. All of your selfies shouldn't be you. That's right. You need to take some pictures of where you're trying to go. Who you wanna be. Who you wanna network in. I'm, I'm telling y'all something. We do vision boards in January and they stop January. Yeah. Where's your vision at? We at July. You crumble it up, throw it to the side. We don't need any more uh, uh, resolutions or anything. It's time to get to work. That's right. yeah. it's time. Wealth creation is about you working. Yeah. And that's the difference and that's the fight and the contention that you got to get to work. You've got to do something that nobody else is doing. I ask God, God, give me something that nobody else is doing. Yeah. Give me an idea. And I'm going to tell y'all, so honestly, wholeheartedly, this is a Facebook moment. This was when uh, Mark Zuckerberg invited five people to his dorm room, and only three people showed up. I'd be, I'd be still sick right now if I was one of those two people that didn't show up. Them twins, they tried to sue him. Come on, that was my idea. Mm. I was looking at TV, they were like, that was our idea, and we did this. We, don't, we just want the world to know that that was our idea. No, 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 no. You count money that you ain't getting. Mm -hmm. You looking at them commas and them zeros mm -hmm. and those commas and those zeros, and you trying to figure out why you show up at that room. Mm -hmm. And the man, let me let me let me say this: the demand right now is listen to me. Men lead your household. Women show up. This is this is not a gender thing. This is I'm very secure in who I am, but I also recognize what God's about to bless. Uh, I, I can see it wholeheartedly. That's why I honored her. That's why we're having this event. Because there is a changing in society right now. And if you pay attention, don't I mean do your research. Pay attention. You are seeing more African American females rising to millionaire status. <laughs> Pride is not gonna get in the way because I got the right attitude. Yeah. Are y'all following me? Mm -hmm. Physical health. Beloved, above all things, I want you to prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Eat right. Go to Mama Jay. Don't you say go. Go to Mama Jay. Go to the gym. She got some stuff on that menu that'll work. Alright, you gravy, mm -hmm. chicken, and just go to any time fitness and work it up. <laughs> it's about moderation. But we have to be physically ready as well. That's right. Because sometimes the pressure of creation or the pressure of creating will cause you to extend. You'll be sometimes the first one at work and the last one to leave. And you need the stamina to be on your best game at 10 o'clock at night. 
because most of you are going to have to work a nine to five and get off of that and begin to work your dream after that. Yeah. You're going to have to have some long nights. Yeah. You're going to have to be up until midnight strategizing, writing a chapter in the book. Yeah. You're going to have to be up there drawing and making things happen. Yeah. And then you're going to have to get that job your A game. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, now, listen, I, 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 I share the same testimony. I got so agitated on my job, I was like, God, I, I got to have something else. It's got to be something else. I'm ready to do something else. I know, don't raise your hand, but I know at some time or another, we all might have been in that place at one time or another. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. Nobody owes you anything. Right. You're not entitled to anything that you don't create. Mm-hmm. You're not entitled to anything that you don't create. So you can't say, oh, I don't want this no more, and then wait for somebody to give you something. Mm-hmm. Go create what you want. And you're going to need strength to be able to do that. And sometimes it's not just physical strength. Sometimes you need some inner mental fortitude to be able to deal with a no. Because honestly, some of you getting a right right no from the wrong person will shut you down. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, no, you can't do it. You crying. You're in the corner. You done bought up your dream. You do it. And you done domesticated yourself and just say, I'll stay here 40 years. And when I retire, they'll give me a pen Mm -hmm. and a plaque. Mm-hmm. And the society will say, I'll give you $800 to go make a move. You just sit at home and if you get in it, here's the thing, here's what's crippling. That when we are on WIC, EBT, food stamps, TANF, and everything else, you can't acknowledge people to be living in your house. Mm-hmm. You can't drive certain cars. And you can't account for certain money. So it creates a lifestyle for you to make you do stuff under the table. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now you hustling under mm-hmm. the table flirting with your gift. Mm. Oh. You making it happen, mm. but you can't go down there and get an LLC to back it up. Oh, wow. mm. You can't draw taxes from it. Mm. Wealth creators are not afraid of taxes. We love taxes. Right. Mm. We love taxes. I don't have a problem paying taxes. I don't run from that. I got an accountant that takes care of all of that. I just dump a bunch of money in front of her. So this is what I made. Make sure I got something left over. Yeah. Make sure they are all right. And let's move forward. Yeah. I don't run from that. Yeah. I don't have nothing under the table. You know why? Because I'm a wealth creator. Yeah. So, so, so when opportunities come, I don't even tell them about the commas and zeros I got. I show them structure. I show them depth. I show them width. I don't even talk about money. I'm backed up and I got documentation. Yeah, right. I don't come to the table asking. We come face to face. I don't care who you are. Yeah. We come negotiating. You know why? Because they're inter mental health of mine. I feed my mental. Right. I feed my mind. I give it to look, I'm not a, I speak wealth creation affirmations. It's a book I'm writing right now. Mm-hmm. And it's based around 31 day devotional around wealth creation affirmations. I am a wealth creator. Mm-hmm. I create what I want in the earth. I speak those things over my mind. I speak those things over my life every single day. When people come and say, oh, you all that, or you think you're doing this just because of this, no, you're wrong. I think I'm doing this because I created it. So you need need your physical health. You need family wealth. I'm talking about aspects of wealth. I'm talking about aspects of wealth, okay? So we talk about inner wealth, we talk about physical wealth, and we're gonna talk about family. And I gave the uh, loop, I mean the you know illustration about Walmart and all those things like that. Scripture tells us the wise man lays up inheritance for his children, children. We got to do better with passing down inheritance in our community. Okay, it takes you nothing to get a quote on life insurance. It takes you nothing to go create a business. It takes you nothing to pull your children together and say, you know what, guys, we struggled, we went through, but you, your children are not going to go through what we had to go through. It ought to be that. See, I go back to my own mind. And those things that were devastated to me as a child, I use that as fuel. Mm-hmm. I use that as fuel to not give up. Mm-hmm. And I speak to my children. I talk to my children. The language of my household is different than the language I came up in. Mm-hmm. And even though there's still some things that I can work on as a parent, the one thing that I can say is that when I go to work, my children can come with me. Mm-hmm. And I got my, my, my dealership is about big, you know, it's about this wide, it's not that big, and they walk around there like they own. They walk around there like, yeah, <laughs> sitting at my desk, writing you notes, you know, talking to customers, hello! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they act like they own the spot, you know? And, and the beauty of it is, they do. They do. They do. They do own it. 
And, and, and I, I have conversation with them. Do you want to grow up and take over the dealership? No, I don't know. I don't think I want to do it. Do you want to grow up and take over the finance company? No, I don't know. I want to grow up and do this. You can do whatever you want to do. You can have whatever you want to have because you're my son. You're my son. You're my daughter. It's rightfully yours. But if you don't want to do it, you're free to do whatever you want to do. My, 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 my son came to me and he said, Dad, I'm coming to the dealership tomorrow. I need $25. <laughs> Same son from the other store. He's about that money. I said, for what? He said, I need $25. I said, you asking me for money? What do you need? You need to me you need $25. He said, I'm going to work at the dealership. So I need $25 so I can go buy something. I said, well, what is it? He said, something that I need. <laughs> I said, son. <laughs> You never have to ask me for money. You don't have to go to my dealership and work for money. That's not a son. That's an employee. I said, if you keep your room clean, if you keep this house clean, and you come to me and say, Daddy, I need, you got it. You don't have to transition from sonship to employee for money. Let me help you. We as a society, I said I represented the church transition from sonship yeah. wow. to employee oh, for money. Wow. Yeah. Very good. For money. Wow. For money. Wow. We did it for money. We didn't do it for praise because if we preach good, y'all praise, y'all jump, y'all shout. We did it for money. Yeah. So we relinquished sonship. Yeah. As my father who owned the cattle on a thousand hills for money. You serious? In the very first scripture we read is in the beginning we did what? He created. So we don't pick up the clues. We don't pick up the indications that it's okay to create something. And I got to go beg and ask my father if I'm a son, if I'm a daughter, for wow. money. No, I don't. I shouldn't have to work. Work was a curse. Hmm. It was a curse. I want to go to Revelation right there in the text. It was a curse, and we got to work it. We got to make it do what it That's do. Right. But we were sons and daughters from the very beginning. We had limitations and parameters, but guess what? When we went to employee, we lost that and relinquished it. The next one, career wealth. Some of you are not entrepreneurs. I get that out there. Some of you maybe want you to know. You want to start a business. <laughs> Some of you might not ever start a business. It's okay. You, you, that might not be your cup of tea. Scripture tells us, invest your grain in seven things. Better yet, eight. Ecclesiastes 11 and 1 and 2. Invest your grain in, 11 th in seven things. Better yet, eight. Because you never know when famine hits the land. Mm. You never know when famine hits the land. You don't have to be an entrepreneur. But listen to me. You've been taught that you need multiple streams of income. That's what you've been taught. You don't need multiple streams of income. That's the problem. You need multiple streams of output. You need multiple streams of output. It didn't say wait for seven streams to come in and then wait for the eight. It says invest. You don't have enough in the earth to bless. Let me help you. God needs something else to bless. Your job's not enough. Right. That's why you're frustrated because he has nothing else to bless. You need more containers. You need more vet. You need more vessels. He needs something else to bless. So it's okay to stay on your job. Just give him something else to bless. And then when you give him something else to bless, guess what? Give him something else to bless. If the Bible says you need to invest in seven things, the only thing that you're investing right now is one in your job. So that's it. You need six other. And then it said better yet eight. Because you don't know when a recession is going to start. You don't know if Donald Trump going to get it off. <laughs> you just talking about how, how mean he is. How arrogant he is. You better put some money up under that mattress. <laughs> you know that some people don't care who's in office? You know that some people don't even care who the president is? Are they still going to create wealth? If you march and protest and you angry, they just sit back and be like, look at the nice little people. <laughs> They're playing Monopoly wow. with the earth. They're playing Monopoly with nations. 
They're playing chess with nations, and we still marching. Yeah. Right. We shall overcome. No justice, no peace. Prove it. Prove it. You know what's going to happen. You know they're going to go to court, or they're going to settle. The most disrespectful thing they could do is settle. It's disrespectful. We don't march for that. You don't see nobody doing that. Why? Because it's money involved. We looking at the payoff. Our community says, oh, I was in an accident. You all right? No, my back. My neck and my back. I'm waiting for that check. I can remember one time, man, I just really counted on my hands and toes how many people I knew just waiting on checks. I was in an accident. You all right? Yeah, I was waiting on a check. The truck hit me. I'm just waiting on a check. <laughs> Wait for somebody to give us something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You could have lost your life and you waiting on a check. Yeah. And then you get it and it's going to 30 days. Mm. Mm. Two days. <laughs> Some of us, you need the anchoring of a job. The parameter of a job. The discipline of a job. To sober you. You need them to say, if you come late one more time, we're going to fire you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. humble yourself to that superior that you yeah. don't like so that you can have a pattern, a regimented behavior pattern so that when you are an entrepreneur, you ain't sleep when you should have that business open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You ain't coming there talking herky-jerking all out your mouth. You're respected, but you don't get that just being an entrepreneur. You get that on a job that you don't That's like. That's right. Yeah. You got somebody peeking over your shoulder. And you need to act right. They ain't saved. They ain't from your background, your culture, but they have reins over you. Yeah. Some of you want to leave jobs only because you don't want to submit to the process. And it's the job that God is using yeah. to develop you. Yeah. 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 Because you don't know how to be a good boss. Your boss is the best thing that's going for you right now. The best thing that's going for you. Because they might not serve your God, they might not say amen, they might not do any other things, but they show up early, they're the last one to leave, and they have reign over you. Right? Submit to your Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Impact wealth. Impact wealth is this. When, you know, we call it like how people just come out of the blue. You know, we wanted Obama to be our savior. The first thing we said was, you know, we got great impact in the White House. We got representation in the White House. What has he done for black people? I mean, he threw y'all a curveball. Threw me one, too. I mean, he promised all of these things like, you know, politicians do. Get in, and then he did some other stuff. But he was able to utilize phenomenal impact. Your life has to be impactful. People have to be able to look to you and say, she's a woman that I can trust. I can confide in her. I can depend on her. There's a reason why everybody in your department, on your job, keeps coming to you. The first thing you attach it to is, I don't get paid to do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't in my job description. Could it be that God's trying to give you influence? Yes. Wow. That you'll actually sometimes do the job? <laughs> Before the promotion comes, mm, yes, and they're talking about you behind closed doors. Mm. They're seeing all the workload that's on your desk. You're like, I don't do this. I'm just sick and tired of this. I'm just sick and tired. You sick and tired of being blessed? You don't know in the process of being blessed? Mm. Pressure, storms, weight, produce, promotion. Mm. Show me a scripture where anybody was elevated without fighting bears and lions and all out in the woods, being disowned by family. All of those things proceed promotion. And then when he showed up to Goliath, talking about David, when he showed up to Goliath, oh, this is nothing. Him, is this? I, thought, I really thought it was something better. It's the best y'all can do. Here's my armor. Don't need your armor. A couple of rocks slingshot him good. Why? Because what he did when nobody was looking. Right. He had influence with heaven before he got it with man. Mm -hmm. We just want to rub elbows and brown nose. Mm -hmm. You need influence while nobody's looking. Yes. You need to have impact when nobody's paying you any attention. Sure. People need to see you in the break room and you open up your book. What you reading? I'm building wealth right now. Mm -hmm. People need to see you on your job and there's excellence all over you. Yes. You, you ain't at the water cooler like, girl. <laughs> and she over there crying with last year's clothes. 
Right. She got a vision up on her board. But she ain't worrying about what she looked like. She ain't worrying about what she got on because she's trying to get somewhere. And the best thing that we can do is, girl, you better. Did you see her? And then sooner or later, she becomes your boss. Oh. She becomes your supervisor. Hmm. I always liked you. You was always. <laughs> I always love you. <laughs> Freedom says, you know what? I didn't like you. I talked about you behind your back. But at the end of the day, you got something that I really wanted. Can you tell me how you did it? Wow, that's good. That's impact. Yes. That's impact. You got to humble yourself. Mm. Sometimes we're clogged up with too much pride, too much arrogance, mm. like we deserve something. Don't nobody owe you nothing. You don't deserve nothing yeah. that you don't create. Because mm. when you create it, can't nobody take it from you. Yeah. They can't take it from you. They can, like people come into my dealership, and usually I always pass the buck, and I always tell them, oh, this is her dealership. She owns it all. She cuts all. I tell my wife, I'm like, like no shit. don't talk to me. You got to talk to her. She's the one. My wife's like totally new to car sales. She'd be like, <laughs> I just dump it all off on her. I dump it all off on her. And the reason why I dump it all off on her is because I want to see how they're going to act. Mm -hmm. I want to see how they're going to treat her. And my wife really sells more cars than me. Because mm -hmm. one, she don't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> she run back in the office and what am I supposed to say? <laughs> Tell them to do this. Tell them to sign this. If they don't sign it, they can't get the car. So she's just so innocent. You don't sign this, you can't get the car. <laughs> they be like, where do I sign? Get the money, get the money. <laughs> She's honest. She's humble. She don't know anything. Drop your pride. Yeah, Drop your arrogance. Come to the table and say, I've had some accomplishments. I've done some things along the way, but I don't know anything I want greater impact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. We freeze our success like, you know, leftovers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First thing that comes up when people say, you know, what do you do? Oh, I did this 10 years ago. That's mm -hmm. why we still march in protest. Mm -hmm. so we don't have a new strategy. Mm -hmm. We don't have a new strategy. We march, we protest, and that's all we know. So yeah. we think that this does it. We don't know that wealth creation is how you stop violence. Stop freezing your success of what you did 10 years ago. It makes no difference. It makes no difference. You need some new victories. Mm -hmm. You need some new success. Yes. You need some new triumphs. You probably need some new friends. Yes. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm done. Economic wealth. This is what it does, talking to money. Seven places you can find your wealth, and then I'm done. 401k, income from a job, paid off vehicles, family members and savings. And when I say find wealth, this is not just talking about where you get money from. This is where you begin to trace like your wealth creation blueprint. Look at your genealogy. Look at your family reunion. If everybody drunk, if everybody's kicking over, if everybody fighting, it might just be that God's called you to be the first millionaire. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's probably just what it is. If you got some wealthy people in your family, you pull from them, you trace for them, you model their behavior. But if everybody acting up, you just the first. That's how you look at it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if anybody can do it, if I don't do it, you can you know, save it. Have a savings account. Get your listen. People will say, listen to me. And I was saying and refute it. Don't have no degree in finances and none of that stuff. Susie Orman and all those people probably know a whole lot more than me, but I tell you this. People will tell you cut up your credit cards. I think this is the most immature, yeah. disrespectful thing that somebody could tell you. Yeah. You got $10,000 on a credit card, and, and you're okay, so, so it's maxed out. Then pay it off and cut it up. That's not teaching you yeah. how to manage That's a steward. Right. My Bible says be a wise steward. Yeah. So you got 10 grand in the credit card. No, you pay it down and you keep it. Yeah. Swipe it every so often. Keep your balance low. Why cut it up? Because you might come across a venture. Somebody say, you know what? We're going out of business. I need to get rid of this house and this, that. And you can swipe a card for it. Are you following me? Yeah. You can go get a cash advance off of it. And something that costs thirty, forty thousand dollars you might can get for 5000 And all you got to do is say, stay right there. <laughs> Swipe a car, and now guess what? You created wealth. Yeah. I walked to the store and bought a popsicle. Gas station right beside my dealership. The lady behind the desk said, 
Buy that car right there. I said, what kind of car is it? 2006 Infiniti G35X, leather sunroof, fully loaded, all-wheel drive. I said, how much you want for it, man? We wanted 5,000, but right now we'll just take 2,500. I said, 2,500, that's way below the value. She said, I just want to get rid of it. I said, I'll be right back. <laughs> no questions asked, yeah, yeah. no emotional roller coaster. I'm a wealth creator. Yeah. I create wealth. And the defining factor of creating wealth and finding your wealth is finding value. Yeah. I'm done after this. It's being able to identify values on the top of my head. When she told me 2006 Infinity G35X all wheel drive leather, sunroof, heated seats, I began to think about value. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I said I could sell it for 8,000. Mm -hmm. I can sell it for 6000 Even on the wholesale market, yeah. I can sell it for 4500 mm -hmm. That'll mm -hmm. double my money up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity. Let me go after it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We say, oh, no, I, that, that ain't worth it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's an opportunity that you can take advantage of. Mm -hmm. You just don't have maybe the stash to pull it from, so you give up. Step number mm -hmm. one was change your attitude. You might not have it, and honestly, you might not need it. You know what you do? You just bring the two and two together. That's wealth creation. How much you want for it? 25. Man, you got 25. Hey, my man, you know what? I got a car for you. I'm trying to sell it for 3500 I got you. I'm serious. I'm going to go get it right now. Let me get 3500 Here go your 25 Let me get the title of the keys. I told you, John Hanna, in it? Let us see some room, man. Yeah. You got a thousand dollars for being a wealth creator. Yeah. 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 But when you start to get those goosebumps and those warm, fuzzy yeah. feelings in your stomach, you equate it to fear instead of strategy. Mm. Wow. Wow. You back up from it, and then you go through what's called remorse and regret. Because mm. then you see somebody else take advantage of it, and you be like, they always doing something. Ooh. They always mm. it. No, you're just mad yeah. because you couldn't think past your feet. Well, ouch. <laughs> you couldn't stretch yourself to a place to say, you know what? I see value in this. The reason why we're having this conference, the reason why it's going to be yearly, we're going to do wealth creation, uh, women of wealth boot camps, is because I see value in this. I see value in this. And it's not just based off of my perspective. Heaven sees value in you. Amen. He sees value in you. As long as you can identify values, you will never be broke. You know who to pick and who not to pick. Mm -hmm. Who to hire and who not to hire. Mm -hmm. What job to go out. You'll be able to discern right from wrong, good from evil. What's going to make me money? What's going to make me sorrow? You, I mean, honestly, look at your last three relationships. Value. You spent too much time with people that don't value you. you spend more time around people that don't stroke your ego. Mm -hmm. It don't butter you up. Yeah. You need somebody sometimes to say, I love you enough to tell you the truth, and yeah. you're flat out wrong. Yeah. I mean, you're wrong. Yeah. You're just wrong. Sit down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need somebody that's not intimidated by your false yeah. successes. Yes. Mm. Yes. I mean, like, some of your success is only Facebook worthy. Mm. Ooh. Wow. 100 Ooh. likes is not success. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hearts on Periscope, not success. Mm. It's not value. I see through you. Yes. I see through you. I see through you. And you got to be able to identify value. Yeah. I only spend time around people that can challenge me. Mm -hmm. I don't like yes people. Mm -hmm. I'm strong. I'm adamant. I'm a wealth creator and all of that. I need somebody around me that say, don't do that. Mm -hmm. I don't need somebody around me that they know it's wrong and they know I shouldn't do it. And then I do it. And then they off in the shadows somewhere like it's all right. No, it ain't all right. Mm -hmm. Value would say, I want to protect you before you fall. Yes. yes. That's good. Value would say, don't go that far into it. Hmm. Value would say, you know what? You need to sit down and take a seat. I don't care if you kick against it. I don't care if you fuss. Just sit down. Because the collateral damage by your next move could set you back three years. Hmm. And I don't want to deal with you. I love you enough. I know I'm going to be there with you while you're complaining for three years. And I got to sit there because I'm a real friend. So I don't want to sit there with you for three years. Because when you're broke, I value enough to still be around. That's why God got to move some of y'all money to separate some people from you. You need to be broke. Broke was the best thing to happen for you. It was. So he can separate some people from you. Because they were only around you as leeches. They were only around you sucking from you. And you couldn't recognize it because you couldn't recognize value. 
identify that recognizing value is a source of wealth creation. It's a source of wealth creation. Somebody say this, I'll never be broke again. I'll, I'll never, never be broke, broke again. again. Say it again, I'll never be broke again. I'll, I'll never, never be broke, broke again. again. Listen to me when I tell you this, and I'm done. I'm done, y'all can enjoy the rest of your evening. Listen to me. You will never be broke again because God has given you the ability to create wealth. Yes. He said he could have said create buttons and everybody wants buttons. Mm -hmm. He could have said he could have said creating uh, flower arrangements and we all to be great uh, you know uh, at creating flower arrangements. The reason why he said create wealth is because here's the critical thing about wealth: it should outlive you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It should outlive you. Yes. Your wealth, your work ethic, your hard uh, time, I mean, your work ethic, your hard work, all your energy and your effort that you're putting into what you're doing today, it ought to lay up a standard for your children's right. children yeah. to know that yeah. we're not lazy people. Right. We don't ask for handouts. Yeah. Guess what? Wick was in our genealogy, in our bloodline, but it stopped when it met a wealth creator. Yeah. It stopped when it met a woman of wealth. Yes. Rick and woman of wealth don't add up. Mm. It might have been temporary. Thank you for the eggs. Thank you for the juicy juice. Thank you for the green juice. I'm appreciative. It got me to a low season. It really did. But I'm also thankful now that I can supply juicy yes. juice. Yes. I'm also thankful now that I can supply meals. Yes. I understood that level of life, so I got a language for it. Yeah. But my language changed as God began to take me out of there. Now I can go back and say, you know what? I know exactly what you're going through because I've been there. Yes. The Bible, listen to me. Joseph had to go through a lot of different changes in his life, from jail to being disowned by family. But the Bible records something so critical that we overlook. It says Joseph began to open up the storehouse. Mm -hmm. And it was a famine in the land. It was a sore famine in the land. And the king said, go see Joseph. Yeah. And Joseph opened up the storehouse and did business with nations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From jail, from being disowned, from family, from you know, Potiphar's wife chasing after him, and all those number of different things. He began to open up a enterprise and not just, you know, mom and pop, you know, just under the table money. I'm talking about foreign exchange. People mm, from all different yes, types of nations yes. showed up at his house and they not wanted or chose. They had to do business with him. And I'll leave you with this. I'm going to leave you with this. That if you position yourself appropriately, God will force momentum into your household that people won't choose it. They won't even consider it. They'll be like, I don't even know why I'm doing this. I don't even really usually do stuff like this. But I just feel led to just dump this on you. Here's another restaurant. That's right. I don't mm -hmm. even know. I mean, we got this building that's been sitting here. Don't worry about it. We're just going right. to give it to you. You're doing a great job. Keep doing it. We just want to make sure that thing grows. Here, you got a clothing line. You know what we're going to do? We're going to put your stuff out there in Atlanta. We're going to put your stuff in LA. Just off mm -hmm. conversation. How you doing? I got my own. You got your own? We was waiting for somebody to have their own. Here you go. Go do this. This going to be you yes. pressing your way. And getting past what you're going through, and God yes. forcing momentum. Yes. Mm. yes. When, you take, when you do it for the least of these, it's like you're doing it for Him. That's yes. value yes. system. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you're able to say, I got my own, but I'm going to help you get yours, He said, You know what? I'm going to open up a door for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. They crooked, they ain't saved, but they got access and influence. Mm -hmm. You will bring the salvation. Mm -hmm. no, no, don't you worry about getting everybody to say, Get the check, then get them saved. <laughs> <laughs> Money first. <laughs> cash it, put that money. Okay, look, y'all ain't living right. I'm just felt it in my spirit. I just gotta get right. Get the money first. I can't talk about this in church. That's why I'm bad about me when I talk about this in church. I want everybody to stand. Flat out honest with you, you know, I ain't full up. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't a billionaire yet. Yet. Yeah. 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 More than me. Just more than ever so often. But here's my thing I realize a formula. 
strategy. I realized something. Else. who harness the networks of people, mm -hmm. the movement, the appreciation, the value, the happiness, the sadness of people, put it on the network, he's our youngest billionaire. I truly believe that as you begin to serve his people outside of church, mm -hmm. outside of church, we pay, I got a church, I can hold more people at church than here. I pay for it to be here because this is where it's going to go down at, in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Fight right now that we're having in society is over a person who has had certain success and failures in the marketplace compared to your politician mm -hmm. from the establishment. The fight is mm -hmm. over marketplace, people. It's not over jumping and shouting, mm -hmm. running, and getting mm -hmm. your praise on. That's the whole problem. You've been getting your praise on. Mm -hmm. It's the whole issue. All we got is a clap and a dance. Mm -hmm. And we came, we came, we came by. Mm -hmm. I pray, I prophesy, I do all of that, but I purchase too. Yes. Mm -hmm. I purchase. Yes. And if I know that there is a crime infested house in the community, I'm not going to come there being all spiritual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going down to the tax delinquent mm -hmm. department at the city hall. Mm -hmm. And if it's on that list, I'm going to buy it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kick them out. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to put them in the street. I'm going to take them to church. And I'm going to show them, hey, listen, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going I'm to I'm ask that God do it in your life, and he will. But I'm going to also show you how to create That's wealth. Right. Mm -hmm. That's good. I have a yeah. passion for this thing. Mm -hmm. We've been leaving people at the altar just hoping that an mm -hmm. angel will come down and show them how to live a life. Mm -hmm. We've been asking. The church has asked for so much. Tithes and offering has been the economy of the church. Mm -hmm. Tithes and offering, come over, building fun. Tithes. Great, no harm, no foul. I did a, I did a, I did a, we're doing it this Sunday, and I did a small business Sunday last week. We had about 10, 15 vendors in there. And it's the first time I've ever heard that people have come to church and left with more money than how they came. Because mm -hmm. yeah. we're so used to taking up lines and offers and different things like that. I went to every entrepreneur and said, did you make money? Did you make money? Did you make money? It was like, yeah, I'm cool. I'm straight. I don't want it back. I ain't ask you to peel off anything for me. What I'm saying is, we are going into uncharted territory. Yeah, that's right. We're going into uncharted territory. Right. The clue, the strategy is this. It's not, I might be the, the one to give you marching orders, but it's going to be y'all. Mm -hmm. It's going to be women. Women like yourselves from different backgrounds, different upbringings. You are going to be the change agent. It's not just going to be the consumers, but y'all going to be the producers. Mm -hmm. Do y'all agree with that? Yeah. Yes. 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 yes! You can register tonight. You can register tonight if you haven't registered already. We're starting at um, 8.20. What time we start? Lisa?